Hello viewers, this is Wagda Ronald taking you through the story of O-Level Math. So in this video, we are going to go through the solutions for a certain mock paper of O-Level Math Paper 1. So this video is suitable for students in Senior 4. So these are the instructions which I believe you are well aware of, but what I can remind you is that for Section A, you have to answer all questions and Section B, you answer any five so a complete paper or a standard paper consists of 17 questions of 10 questions where 10 questions are in section a and they carry equal marks of four four then five seven questions are in section b so for the sake of revision we are going to do all the seven questions but when you're answering your paper you have to attempt only and only five so we shall start with section a so section a question one says given that a hash b so a star b is equal to 5a minus 3b over b evaluate 4 star in brackets 3 star b 3 star 2 so in this case the first thing to do is to work out this by replacing so you have to compare in this case we shall, when you compare a will now be 3 and b will be so by that we shall now come and substitute we know that a is that so when you substitute remember b is there sorry a is there and b is there so we shall come and put our three here and two here then over b so we shall come and put this b here so when i simplify five by three gives me 15 and three by two gives me six and this two remains so then five, 15 minus 6 gives me 9, this remains 2. So when I divide 9 over 2, will give me 4.5. So now I've got this, the whole of this in bracket as 4.5. There are 4. It implies that three, 4 star, 3 star 2 is the same as 4 star 4.5. Now in this case, our A is 4 and our B is 4.5. There are 4. We shall come and substitute in this formula. So we shall put this A here. This 4 will be here and this B will be here. And again, this B is also a denominator. Therefore, we shall come and put 4.5 down. After substituting, we shall come and simplify. So four by 5 by 4 gives me 20. 3 by 4.5 gives me 13.5. And 4.5 remains there. Then when I subtract this, I'll come up with 6.5. Down I have 4.5. When I simplify this, I'll come up with 13 over 9. So basically, that's what they wanted and in question 1. So let's see how much can be awarded for this question. So M1 for substituting using this given operation. Then A1 for output. Then here, M1 for substituting using the given operation and A1 for output. Now we shall go to question 2. Question 2 says that solve the equation, this equation, and they give it for mass. So the first thing to do is to get the lowest common divisor. So lowest com common divisor is got from the denominator. So 5 and 4, sorry, 5 and 2, the LCM is 10. Therefore, the lowest common divisor will be 10. What does that mean? It means that you'll come and multiply 10 throughout each term. So this multiplied by 10 gives me that. This multiplied by 10 gives me that. This multiplied by 10 gives me that. Now next is to simplify. Five, 10 divided by 5 gives me 2, which is there. Five, 4 by 10 gives me 40. Then 10 divided by 2 gives me 5, which is there. Next is open brackets, so 2 by x gives me 2x, then 2 by 3 gives me 6. 40 is there, then 5 by x gives me 5x, and 5 by negative 2 gives me negative 10, but because of this negative and this negative, will give me positive. So that is why I'm writing a positive here. Next is collect like terms, so what I'll do, I'll bring this negative this x this side it was negative so it becomes positive that's why there is a plus here 
then I bring this 6 this side it was negative so it becomes positive that's why you see a positive here next is to simplify so 2 plus 5 gives me 5x then 50 plus 6 gives me 56 the next is to divide both sides by 7 so that I, make, I can make x the subject so when I make when I divide 56 by 7 I come up with 8 therefore x is equal to 8 so basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded So M1 for multiplying followed by 10 and another M1 for collecting like terms. So at this point there are four and M1 for dividing followed by 7 and A1 for the value of X. So now we shall go to question 3 which says that the mean weight of a class of 50 girls is M kilograms. When two girls whose total weight is 160 kilograms are absent, the mean weight of those present is 2 kilograms less than the mean weight of the whole class. Find the value of M. So first of all, you shall know that the total weight of 50 girls is equal to number of number over sorry number multiplied by the mean. So remember, mean is equal to summation of the tot of the weight total weight over the number which is 50 therefore total weight will now be 50 multiplied by the mean which is m then when two girls are absent the mean the total weight will now be the, the remaining girls will now be 48 because 50 minus 2 is 48 and the mean remember is 2 kilograms less therefore it will be the initial mean which was m minus that is why we put here m minus 2 so this will be the total weight of the remaining girls the weight of the absent girls therefore will be equal to this total weight when they are present minus the total weight when they are absent that is why you see here 50m minus 48 in brackets m minus 2 but they told us that the total weight of the girls which are absent is 160 so we shall equate this with 60 and when then we simplify so 50m minus 48m gives me 2m then when I bring this one this side it will be 160 minus 96 to become 64 when I divide both sides by 2 I'll come up with m being equal to 32 so basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded So M1 for the weight for getting the weight of the absent girls equate forming the equation for weight of the absent girls, then M1 another M1 for the equating to the given weight, another M1 for dividing by two, and A1 for getting the value of M. Now we shall go to question four, which says that determine the inequality that defines the shaded region. And they give it for max. So they want the inequality that defines this shaded region. So first of all you have to know the points so the any two points on the lines because we have to first get the equation of the line so we have this point which is 0 5 and this point which is 4 0 So you come and say that the intercepts are 4, 0 and 0, 5, therefore the gradient will be changing y over changing x. So changing y will be 5 minus 0 which is this, then 0 minus 4 which is that. In the end I'll come up with negative 5 over 4. Now that I've got the gradient I also know the y intercept is 5 because when you come here the curve the line cuts the y-axis at the coordinate of 5 that means that the y-intercept is 5 and that y-intercept is denoted by a symbol small c so now that i know the gradient and i know the intercept y-intercept i can come and say that the equation of the line is given by y equal to mx plus c 
Therefore, M is this and C is that. Therefore, I'll come and substitute to come up with that equation of the line. So when I'm apply thro throughout by 4, I'll come up with 4Y is equal to negative 5X plus 20. So now I've got the equation of the line, but I also have to get the inequality. So inequality, you come and use assume any inequality. So we can either use less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. The reason why we are putting this O equal to, it is because the line was a bold line, not a dot. If it was dotted, we would have used less than or greater than. So if I use the symbol of less than O equal to, by replacing it where there was equal sign, I will test using 0, 0. So what does that mean? Come and substitute 0, because this 0, 0 means that Y is equal to 0 and X is equal to 0. So when I substitute, this is what I'm going to come up with. 0 is, equal, is less or equal to 0 plus 20. So in the end, 0 is less or equal to 20. So you ask yourself, is this set inequality true or not? Now, because it is true that 0 is less or equal to 20, it implies that we shall come here and write true. What does that mean? It means that the part where I got that point from is the wanted region. Therefore, shall come and write that therefore the required inequality is 4y less or equal to negative 5x plus 20. If it was false, it means that we had to interchange the inequality. For example, if this was false, we would have come and wrote, wrote here that greater than or equal to that, greater than or equal to sign. So basically, that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 for getting the gradient, M1 for substituting, and M1 for testing, then A1 for the required inequality. Now we shall go to question 5. So question 5 says that given the matrix M, which is 1, negative 2, 3, 4, find the determinant of M squared. Now that m squared means m followed by m, so m multiplied by m. Therefore, m squared will be this multiplied by the very matrix. So next step is to how is to multiply the two matrices. So remember, we multiply row by column. So row first row and first column, we shall say one times one to gives me one, which is here. Then negative two times three to give me negative six, which is there. So you add the two to come up with one minus six. Then first row, second column, it will be 1 times negative 2, which is that, plus negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. Then second row, first column, 3 times 1 to give me 3. 4 times 3 will give me 12, so we have to add the 2. Then second row, second column, it will be 3 times negative 2 to give me negative 6, plus. 4 times 4 to give me positive 16. So next is to simplify. 1 minus 6 gives me negative 5. Negative 2 minus 8 gives me negative 10. 3 plus 12 gives me 15. And negative 6 plus 16 gives me positive 10. So basically I've got now the matrix of m squared. Next is to get the determinant. So determinant is good by product of entries in the major diagonal which is this is the major diagonal so product will be negative 5 times 10 to give me negative 50 minus the product of entries in the minor diagonal so negative sorry 15 my times negative 10 gives me negative 150 which is this so this product minus this product that will be my determinant so with that, I realize that this negative and this negative gives me a positive, which is there. So negative 50 plus 150 will give me 100. So basically, that's what they wanted. And now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 for matrix, matrix multiplication and A1 for output, getting the matrix of M squared. M1 for subtraction and A1 for output. Now we shall go to question 6. Question 6 says that a point L, which is 2, 3, is reflected in the x axis to a point L prime. L prime is then reflected 
in the line x equal to y to a point L double prime. Find the coordinates of Roman 1, L prime and Roman 2, L double prime. So the good thing they told us to find, meaning we can use a graph. So we shall come out here and put our get our graph paper. We have to plot this point. So we have to first draw the axis, the x-axis, and also the y-axis. That is always the first step. So always draw these axes and label them. X axis horizontal, y axis vertical, then you put the values. So those are the values for the x axis. Next is to put the values of the y axis. Okay, so those we have drawn our axes and labeled them, so we are now good to go. So we have to plot this point 2, 3. So 2 is here. And 3 is here. Therefore, the point will be there. So, you come and plot that point and call it L. Now, they told us that this point is reflected by the x axis. What does that mean? So, this, is the, this acts like our mirror line. Therefore, remember, reflection means that distance from of object from the mirror is equal to distance of image from the mirror. So from here to this mirror, it, will, it is how many units? So it is 1, 2, 3. What does that mean? It means that also from this to where the image is, it should be 3 units. So it will be 1, 2, and 3. So that means that the object will be at this. So the image will be at that point, L double prime. So you come and show it that from here to here it is 3 units, also from here to here it has to be 3 units and put our image of L prime. Next they told us that this L prime is also reflected by a line x equal to y. So we shall come and first plot the line of x equal to y. So x equal to y means that the, the x value is equal to the y value. So if I use negative 5 here as y, it implies that also as x it implies that also y value will also be negative 5 that's why you put here that point next if i put if i use positive 5 as the x axis it implies that even the y value will be 5 so those are the two points and next is to draw a line to between through the two points so that is our mirror line y equal to x or x equal to y now for this point it is okay to for example if i draw from here, I'll say 1, 2, and this is a half, but that one's a bit confusing, so the easiest method to use is to go, if I move horizontally this side, it implies that from this mirror line, I'll move vertical. Therefore, I'll come and count 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those are 5 units. What does that mean? It means that even vertically, it has to be 5 units, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What does that mean? It means that the image is now at this point. So let's show that. So you shall move horizontally 5 units, also move vertically 5 units, and where we stop is our L double prime. So they told us to find the coordinates. So the coordinates of L prime is 2, negative 3. So you shall come here and write that L prime is 2, negative 3, and L double prime is negative 3, 2. So basically, that's what they wanted. Now let's see how mass can be awarded. So B1 for locating L, for locating L double prime, another B1 for stating the coordinate of L, L prime. Then another B1 for locating L double prime and and uh, the last B1 for, log for studying the coordinate of L double prime. So basically, that's how the formats could be awarded. Now we shall go to question 7. Question 7 says, The figure shows a circle of with AB as diameter. Called DC is parallel to AB. So DC is parallel to AB. And angle ABC is 63. So this is angle ABC. It is 63 degrees. Determine the angles CAB and DEA. So they want the angle CAB, which is this, and angle 
DAE which is that so what does that mean so this is C this is angle CAB let it be value let, it, let us give it to value X and because this and this is parallel this is parallel to AB it implies that this angle is also equal to this because of alternating angles then because this is the diameter it implies that this angle is equal to 90 degrees any angle sub subtended at the diameter any angle sub subtended at the circumference by the diameter is equal to 90 degrees so that's why this is 90 then you also, they also wanted the angle of DAE so let that angle be Y so next is to, is to find the value of x and the value of y. For the value of x, you realize that this is a right angle triangle. So triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. Therefore, when I add all the angles of a triangle, I must get 180. So when I add CX plus 63 plus 90, I must get 180. Next is to simplify. So 63 plus 90 is 153. The next is to make x the subject. So 180 minus 53 it will give me 27 degrees so that is the angle of CAB which they wanted now we shall go to get the value of Y which is the angle of DEA now for a cyclic quadra quadrilateral see this is a cyclic quadrilateral four sided quadrilateral means a four sided figure so so a C D E is a cyclic quadrilateral. What does that mean? It means that opposite angles add up to 180. So this angle and this angle must add up to 180. So shall come here and say that x plus y is equal to 180. But the good thing we know x. So shall come and substitute for x and make y the subject and y will be 153 degrees. So basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 forget it for substituting into the angle sum of a triangle and A1 for the value of X. M1 for substituting into the angle sum of a cyclic quadrilateral and opposite angles then A1 so this is supposed to be A1 so A1 for the value of Y. Now we shall go to question 8 which is that the equation AX squared plus BX plus C equal to 0 has roots x equal to 2 over 3 and x equal to negative 3 over 2. Find the values of a, b and c. So the good thing we have the roots. So we shall come here and say that the roots are this and this. Then the next step is to cross multiply. So this with this will give me 3x equal to 2 and this with this it will give me 2x equal to negative 3. Then next is to put all the values on one side so that we remain with zero on the right hand side. So this put taking this to the side becomes negative, two, so it becomes three x minus two equal to zero. So when I take this side, this negative three x this side becomes positive, so it becomes two x plus three being equal to zero. Now both are equal to zero, meaning that we can multiply the two factors. So this factor multiplied by this factor will be equal to zero. The next is to expand. So expanding, I'll multiply this 3x throughout the whole of this bracket. That's what I'm doing here. Then negative 2 throughout the whole of this bracket to give me this part. So next is to open the entire bracket. So negative 3, sorry, 3x by 2x will give me 6x squared. Then 3x by 3 will give me 9x. Negative 2 by 2 2x will give me negative 4x negative 2 by 3 will give me negative 6 equal to 0 so next is collect like terms this with this will give me 5 positive 5 therefore the end in the end I'll come up with 6x squared plus 5x minus 6 equal to 0 now when you look at this it is it is in the form of the given quadratic which is that what does that mean 
it means that now this coefficient of x squared is our a and b is the coefficient of x and c is our constant therefore a is 6 b is 5 and c is negative 6 so basically that's what they wanted now let's see how much can be awarded so m1 for both factors so these are the factors the another m1 for multiplying the factors so at this step that is m1 then m1 for getting the quadratic equation and b1 for stating the values of a b and c so now we shall go to question 9 question 9 says that given that cos theta is equal to negative 12 over 13 and theta is greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 180 degrees find 2 tan theta without using a calculator or mathematical tables so when they write this word without using a calculator or mathematical tables it implies that we have to use quadrants quadrants and Pythagoras theory so your command says that because cos is negative it implies that it is either in the second quadrant or third quadrant but because of this condition that theta must not exceed 180 it implies that theta is in the second quadrant because if it, if it is, was in the third quadrant then it will be exceeding 180 degrees and in the th second quadrant we all know that tan is negative so our value of tan must be negative always remember that so next is to come and draw a diagram so this is the value of theta now it is in, this is now the triangle in the second quadrant so 12 and 13 remember cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse so this is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse so this will now be this will now be the opposite so you have to get the value of x because tan tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent so the first thing to do is to get the value of the opposite so by Pythagoras theory x will be equal to the square root of 13 squared minus 12 squared which will be equal to square root of 25 which is which gives me 5 so the value of x is 5 now that I've got the value of x I can get the value of tan theta remember tan theta must be negative in the second quadrant so tan theta will be equal to negative of opposite over adjacent which gives me negative of opposite where opposite is x which is 5 and adjacent is 12 which is, which is here so always don't forget this negative but in the question they want you to find the value of 2 tan theta therefore we shall come and say that therefore 2 tan theta is equal to 2 times this value of tan theta to give me negative 5 over 6 so basically that's what they wanted now let's see how much can be awarded so m1 for substituting in Pythagoras theory and a1 for output m1 for substituting here and a1 for output always this negative has to be seen now we shall go to question 10 question 10 says a number is chosen at random from a set of even numbers between 0 and 30 what is the probability that the number is a square number so the first thing to do is write the even space so even space is a so we shall say let's set a b even numbers between 0 and 30 so we shall come and list them that even numbers between 0 and 30 are 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 22 24 26 and lastly 28 so the values are between 0 and 30 therefore 30 must not be included next is to set down the square numbers between 0 and 30 so the square numbers between 0 and 30 are 4 9 16 25 so these square numbers are got by squaring so for example 2 squared is 4 3 squared is 9 4 squared is 16 5 squared is 
25 now 6 squared will be 36 but 36 is exceeding 30 therefore we shouldn't include that so we, that's why we stop at 25 now the question said what is the probability that the number is a square number so we are looking for the intersection so the intersection is what is common in both this 4 is common in both and also 16 is common in both therefore the intersection of a, a therefore a intersection b will be the set of a intersection b will be 4 and 16 now the probability will be equal to number of members of a intersection b over number of members of a remember a is the sample space so we shall have two intersection members in intersection b will are two one and two what about for a to be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so that's why you put here fourteen so that is uh, the probability they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded So B1 for generating set A, B2, B1 for generating set set B, and M1 for substituting, and A1 for the required probability. So that is that. So M1 for you to state this value of 2, and this, and A, and A1 for the division quotient. So now we shall go to question section B. Now we have, what we have been doing has been section A for four marks. Now we shall go to section B, where a student is expected to answer only twenty-five questions out of the seven, and each question all questions carry equal marks. But because of revision, we shall answer all the seventeen questions, all the seven questions. So we shall start with question 11. Question 11 says, using a ruler, a pencil, and a pair of compasses only, but a construct a triangle, Pichu Ara, where Pichu is 6.2 centimeters, and angle Pichu Ara is 120 degrees, and P Ara is 8.6 centimeters. Then part B says, locate point S on P2 produced such that RS is equal to 2S. Measure RS. Then lastly, part C says, draw a circle passing through the points P, S, R. Then measure the radius of the circle. So this question is under construction and in construction the first thing to do is to make a sketch of what is given. So we have to first make a sketch. First of all we are given that Pichu is 6.2 centimeters, angle Pichu R is 120 degrees and PR is 8.6 centimeters. So let's first try, draw that. So we shall have to come and make a sketch. So P2 is 6 centimeters. Then angle P2 R was 120 degrees. And length P R is 8.6 centimeters. Now next when you that was Roman part A. Now when you go to part B, they told us locate point S on P2 produced such that RS is equal to 2S and measure RS. So, we shall come here. Now, they told us that RS is equal to 2S. What does that mean? It means that this is an isosceles triangle whereby this side is equal to this side, meaning even this angle, if this angle is 60, remember this angle will be 60 because angles on a straight line add up to 180, therefore 180 minus 120 remain with 60. Now because this angle is 60, this angle also must be 60 for this length to be equal to that length. So next they want you to measure our uh, S. So that, will, that is part B. Now when you go to part C, part C they say draw a circle passing through points P, S, R and measure the radius of the circle. So we have to, after drawing that we have to draw a circle passing through the points P, 
S and R. So basically that is the sketch. Now we shall now go and draw an accurate diagram. Remember we have to we must have a pencil, a ruler and a pair of compasses. So let's get started. So first thing to do is draw a horizontal line and mark point 2 which is this point as you can see it here. Then next I'm going to put my compass needle here and I want to measure distance P and I want to locate the position of P so I have to measure distance of the length of 6.2 centimeters and I'll come and draw an arc. So now this is now point P and this is the distance of 6.2 centimeters. So you have to, to write all of them there. You have to label P and also write 6.2 centimeters. Next is also put a, a compass needle here. Now what I want is to measure this angle of 120. So to measure this, I have to I'll, I'll have to measure the angle of 60 degrees. So I'll come here and put a compass needle here using any length and draw that arc. Then after that, I'll put without changing the the length of the compass with or the compass, I'll put the, the compass needle here and draw that arc. Now next I'll join a line through this point and draw a line through that point and also through this intersection. So when I do that I'll come up with that and that will be my 120 degrees. So I've now drawn constructed 120 degrees. So the next thing to do is to measure off the length of 8.6 centimeters. So what I will do, I'll put my compass needle here with a length of and mark off the length of 8.6 centimeters. So draw an arc and that will be my point R. So now I've got the point P to R. So I'll, measure, I'll complete the triangle and that will be the triangle which was required. And that was part A. Now part B they wanted us to locate this point S. Now for you to locate this point S you must measure off an angle of 60 here at point R. So what I'll do, I'll put my compass needle here and make an arc there. So this arc and this arc. After that, I'll put the compass needle here and mark off this without interchanging the compass length so to come up with this point. Now I'm going to join this point to this point and that will be my angle of, and I'll be able to get my angle of 60. So when I join, that's what I'm going to get. And in where it missed this point, this line of P2 will be my point S. I think that was part B. So I'll come here, they told us to measure off RS. So when I measure off this length from here, up this point, it will be 3.6 centimeters. So I will give an allowance of plus or minus 0 0.1. So now we are done with part B of, of drawing of locating point S and measuring distance RS. Next is to draw a circle through points P, S and R. So that is, a, that is circumscribing a circle therefore we have to bisect any two sides. So what we are going to do, we are going to bisect sides P, S and side P, R. So let's start by bisecting side P, S. So for side PS, what I'll do, I'll put my compass needle here and mark, draw those two arcs, this arc above and this arc below. Then without changing the width of the compass, I'll put my compass needle here and measure off the arc that and this arc. Next is to join, to draw a line through this point and this point of intersection of the arcs. So when I do that, this is what I'll come up with, and that will be my perpendicular bisector of PS. Now, next is to bisect side PR. So, what I'll do, I'll put my compass needle here and draw an two arcs this side above and this side below. Then, next, without changing the width, I'll put my compass needle here and draw two arcs also this side and this side to intersect. So out of that, I'll look for these two points of intersection and I'll draw a line through those two points. 
So when I draw a line through those two points, that's what I'm going to get. So I've managed to get two perpendicular bisectors and their point of intersection will be the center of this circle. So what I'm going to do, I'll put my compass needle here and then measure off, put the pencil here so that I can be able to draw a circle through those, all those points. So when I do that, that's what I'm, I'll come up with that circle. So we have finished part C, but remember they also told us to measure the radius of the circle. So I'll come here and say that the radius is 5 centimeters. So the distance from this point to this point will be 5 centimeters. So usually we give an allowance of plus or minus 0 0.1 for, together for some errors. So basically that's what they wanted in this question. And now let's see how mass can be awarded. So in this case, B2 for this correct sketch, this sketch when it is, uh, the whole of it is correct, that is B2, so there are two marks. Then M1 for measuring side this, if this side is length is correct, 6.2, it, it is correct, that is M1. Then another M1 for constructing angle of 120 degrees at 2. Then another M1 for measuring off this side, so if this is correct, and it is 8.6 meters. That is another M1. The another M1 for measuring an angle of 60 at point R. So these acts must be seen. Then M1 for another M1 for point S. For, for, so for you to locate that point S, that is M1. Then M1 for bisecting any two sides. So one M1 for this perpendicular bisector, another M1 for the other perpendicular bisector. Then A1 for the correct circle, A1 for length RS, and A1 for the radius. So basically, that's how the mass would come about. Now we shall go to question 12. Question 12 says, a triangle with vertices A which is 2, 0, B which is 2, 4, and C which is negative 1, 1 is mapped on two triangle B A prime B prime C prime by a matrix M which is four negative one one two one two okay then triangle A prime B prime C prime is then mapped onto triangle A double prime B double prime C double prime by matrix N which is negative one zero two one then part A find the coordinates of A prime B prime and C prime. Then Roman 2, A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. Then part B, find the single matrix of transformation that would map triangle ABC onto triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Then part C, if the area of triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime is 61.2 centimeters squared, find the area of triangle ABC. So Roman 1 is 3 marks, Roman 2 is 3 marks, part B is 2 marks, and part C is 4 marks. So let's see how those marks could be got. So first of all, for you to get A, double, A prime, B prime, C prime, you have to use this matrix, so matrix M, and for you to get a double prime, B double prime, C double prime, you have to use this matrix of N. So let's do that and see. Now for A Roman 1, for point A prime, we shall use this matrix. So we use matrix M for multiply by the coordinate of A. So for A prime, I'll multiply matrix M followed by coordinate of A. So row by column, so this by this, I'll come up with this, multiply by this to come up with 8, which is there. The negative 1 times 0 will give me 0. Then second row and this column, I'll come up with 1 times 2, which is 2. Then 2 times 0, which is 0. So in the end, I'll come up with 8, 2. Therefore, the coordinate is of A prime is 2, sorry, 8, 2. So I'm going to do the same for B prime. So B prime still 
I'll say row by column to come up with 8 minus 4 then second row with this column to come up with 2 plus 8 in the end I'll come up with 14 therefore quantity of B prime is 14 I'll do the same for C prime so row by column so this by this will give me negative 4 negative 1 and this with this will give me negative 1 plus 2 when I simplify I come up with negative 5 1 which therefore quantity of C prime is negative 5 1 so that has been Roman 1 now we shall go to Roman 2 so Roman 2 we shall use matrix of n so and this and, and uh, I'll use matrix of n and the coordinates of a prime b prime and c prime so for a prime double prime I'll use the coordinate of a prime so a prime will be this and this will be matrix n so next is to multiply so this with this will give me negative 8 plus 0 then this with this will give me 16 plus 8 so in the end I'll come up with 18 sorry negative 8 18 therefore a double prime is negative 8 18 for b double prime I'll use matrix n and this coordinate of a of b prime so row by column will give me this negative 4 plus 0 and this with this will give me 8 plus 10 so in the end I'll come up with a coordinate of negative 4 18 then for C I'll do the same also I'll use this coordinate with the matrix of n so this with this will give me 5 plus 0 and this with this will give me negative 10 plus 1 so in the end I'll come up with a coordinate of 5 negative 9 so basically that's what they wanted in a Roman 1 and Roman 2 so before we go to the next slide let's see how much can be awarded for this question so b1 for getting a prime this for getting b prime this for getting b c prime and this for getting a double prime for getting b double prime and for getting c double prime so that was part a now part b said find the single matrix of transformation that would map a triangle abc on two a double prime b double prime c double prime then part C, if the area of triangle this is 61.2, find the area of triangle ABC. So in this case, this is the image and this will be the object. So the single matrix is matrix NM. This matrix M followed by N is written by that. So we are going to multiply the two matrices to get a single matrix so first row first column will give me negative 4 plus 0 then first row second column will give me 0 1 plus 0 then second row first column will give me 8 plus 1 and second row second column will give me negative 2 plus 2 so and then I'll come up with negative 4 1 and 9 0 so this is the single matrix that would map the object to the final image of a double prime b double prime c double prime now shall go to part c where they want the area so for you to get the area you have to get first get the determinant so determinant of this ma single matrix is product of entries in the major diagonal which is for negative 4 by 0 to give me 0 minus product of entries in the minor diagonal which is 9 times 1 to give me 9 so 0 minus 9 will give me negative nine now because the determinant is negative we shall use absolute value of determinant so the absolute value of determinant will be equal to area of image over area of object now the absolute value of this determinant will be positive nine absolute means positive so positive nine which is the absolute value of that will be equal to area of image which is 61.2 and was given then area of object is the one we want which is the area of triangle ABC so next is to make area ABC the subject uh, so it will be when I bring this one this side and this one this side it will become 61.2 is over 9 to give me 6.8 centimeters squared so basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded
So M1 for matrix multiplication and A1 for the output, M1 for subtraction and A1 for the output, M1 for division and A1 for output. So now we shall go to question 13 and question 13 part A says that copy and complete the table of y equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 9 and they give it for max so we have to complete fill in the missing spaces in this table then part b you use your completed table to draw graph to draw the graph y equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 9 for the values of x from negative two, negative 2 to positive 4 Use a scale of 2 centimeters to 1 unit of the x axis and 2 centimeters to 2 units of the y axis. Then, part C, use your graph to find the roots of the equation Roman 1, 2x squared minus 3x equal to 9, and Roman 2, x squared minus 2x minus 5 equal to 0. So, we shall start with part A where they want, to, want you to copy and complete the table. So we shall fill in all these missing spaces. Let's start with this. So let's start with this column. So that column 2x squared means that where there is x you put negative 2 so it becomes 2 times open brackets negative 2 squared so negative 2 squared is positive 4 then positive 4 times 2 is 8 so we shall come here and write 8. Then for this case, it means that where there is x, we put there negative 2. So negative 3 times negative 2 gives you positive 6. Then this is negative 9, so just write it here. Now y means that you add all these values. So add these three values. So when I add 8 plus 6 plus negative 9, I'll come up with positive 5. So we are done with this column. Now let's go to this column of negative 1. So for negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So positive 1 times 2 will give me 2. Then negative 3 by times negative 1 will give me positive 3. This 9 we just rewrite. Then after that we have to add 2 plus 3 plus negative 9 to come up with negative 4. So we are done with this. Now we are going to this column of 1. So 1 squared is 1, then two, therefore 2 times 1 will give me 2, which is that. Then negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, then it's negative 9, you write negative 9. Then you add all these 3, so 2 plus negative 3 plus negative 9 will give me negative 10. So we are done with this, now let's go to this. So 2, two times eight, 2 squared, it means... First of all, 2 squared is 4, therefore 4 times 2 will give me 8. Then here, negative 3 times 2 will give me negative 6. This is negative 9, you write negative 9 there. So we add all these 3, so when you add 8 plus negative 6 plus negative 9 will come up with negative 7. So we are done with this column, now let's go to the last column. So for this part, 4 squared is... 16 then 16 times 2 will give me 32 then this side negative 3 times x will give me negative 12 then this negative 9 you write as it is so next we have to add so 32 plus negative 12 plus negative 9 will give me 11 so with that we have finished part a where they want us wanted us to copy and complete the table now let's see how much can be awarded for that part So B1 for this row, and B1 for this row, B1 for this row, B1 for that row. So, so that has been part A. Now we shall go to part B. Part B says that use your completed table to draw a graph of y equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 9 for values of x greater than or equal to negative 2 but less or equal to positive 4. And in this case they have given us the scale so you have to maintain the scale says that Two centimeters to represent one unit and on the x-axis and two centimeters to represent two units on the y-axis. So when they give when the scale is given, you have to 
maintain it. So for you to plot a graph, you must have a graph paper. So that is our graph paper. Next we have to label, draw and label the x and y axis. So that is x axis, then also you draw the y axis. So next is now to put the values on the x axis. Remember they told us x axis, 2 centimeters represent 1 unit, that's why you see here 2 centimeters are representing 1 unit and the scale is uniform throughout. Then you shall do the same for the y axis, but for the y axis they told us that 2 centimeters represent 2 units. That's why here you can see that 2 centimeters represent 2 units and the scale is uniform throughout. So next is to plot. So plotting, we have to go back to our completed table and look for the values. So we are, we are going to plot corresponding values of x and y. For example, negative 2 will correspond to 5, negative 1 will correspond to negative 4, 0 will correspond to negative 9, 1 will correspond to negative 10, 2 will correspond to negative 7, 3 will correspond to 0, 4 will correspond to 11. So let's plot all those points first. So you start with the negative 2. So negative 2 corresponds to 5, then negative 1 to negative 4, then 0 corresponds to negative 9, then 1 corresponds to negative 10, 2 corresponds to negative 7, 3 corresponds to 0, and lastly 4 corresponds to 11. So we have finished to plot all the points. Next is to draw a smooth curve through all these points. So let's draw that smooth curve. The curve must be reasonably smooth as possible. So that is curve. After drawing the curve, you have to label. So your curve must be smooth and it has to be labeled. So now that, that now we are finished part B, now we shall go to part C. So part C says that use your graph to find the roots of the equation part A. 2x squared minus 3x equal to 9 and part B x squared minus 2x minus 5 equal to 0. So for Roman part A, we shall look for the x intercept. So the curve cuts the x-axis at this point and that read of that value which is negative 1.5 and also at this point then read of that value which is 3. Now that we have got those values we shall come here and say that the roots are x equal to negative 1.5 and x equal to 3. So that was Roman 1. What about Roman 2? So for Roman 2 we are given this equation so the first but this curve is 2x squared. I think we realize that this is 2x squared, but this is x. So what what should we do? The first thing will be to multiply throughout by 2. So when I multiply throughout by 2, we'll, I'll come up with this. So it is somewhat similar to this because the coefficient of x squared is the same for both. So because now that it's the same, we can now go ahead and subtract to see the remaining part. So when I subtract the given curve which is this minus this which is this I realize that I'll come up with this y minus 0 is y this cancels then this minus that is positive x then this minus this is positive 1 so that means that I'm I have to draw a line of y equal to x plus 1 so before I draw I have to get the two at least two coordinates so I'll come here and say that for when x is negative 2, for example, y will be negative 1. For example, when I put here negative 2, it will become negative 2 plus 1 to, be, to give you negative 1. Then at that point, let me use 4. So when x is 4, now why am I using negative 2 and negative 4? It is because we are told that x values start from negative 2 and end at, ne at positive 4. So I'll use those end lines. So negative 2 is that now positive 4 
I'll come and put 4 here so 4 plus 1 will be 5 so I'll come and put 5 so now I've got two coordinates I'm going to plot those two coordinates on this graph so I'll start with negative 1 and neg negative 2 negative 1 which is that and also 4 5 which is that so next I'll have to draw a line through these two points drawn using a ruler so I'll come here and do that so and I have to label the line so now that I've got that, the roots will now be the intersection of the line and the curve. So they think here there is a point of intersection and also here there is a point of intersection. So let's start with this one and read off that value. So when I read off this value, I realize the value is negative 1.4. And for this part, I'll have to drop a vertical line to meet the x-axis and read off this value. So when I read off that value, it will be 3.45 so I'll come here and say that the roots are x equal to negative 1.4 and x equal to 3.45 so basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded So this x b1 is for both axes with the correct scale which was given in the question. Then m1 for plotting all the points correctly for the curve and m1 for drawing a reasonably smooth curve. It must be smooth. Then this a1 is for the first root here, another a1 is for the second root there. Then m1 for drawing the line y equal to x plus 1, a1 for the first root here and another a1 for the second root there so basically that's what they wanted in this question now we shall go to question 14 and question 14 says in a national football league four clubs attained the following results in two rounds tournament so in the first round team a won three drew four and lost none Team B won four, drew two and lost none and lost, lost one. Team C won five, drew none and lost two. And team D won three, drew two and lost two. So that was the first round. What about in the second round? In the second round, team A won four, drew two and lost one. Team B won three, drew three and lost two. 1. Team C won all. Team D won 1, drew 4 and lost 2. So that information they asked these questions. So part A. Part A says write down a 3 by 4 matrix for the performance of the teams in Roman 1 each round and Roman 2 both rounds. Then part B, if three points are awarded for a win, one point for a draw and zero points for a loss, write a 1 by 3 matrix for, the th for three points awarded. Then part B, by matrix multiplication determine the tournament winner. So we shall start with part A Roman 1. So part A Roman 1 why they want a 3x4 matrix. So 3x4 means that rows are 3 and 4 and columns are 4. So the performance matrix for the first round is that. What does that mean? It means that now what we are going to do because they wanted 3 rows and 4 columns it implies that these will be the teams, this will be the, val the points for team A, team B, team C, and team D. For example, if you look at this, they told us that team A, first round, won 3, drew 4, and lost none. So that is 3, 4, 0. That is why here you see 3, 4, 0. Then for team B, won 4, drew 2 and lost none that is so it is 4 2 1 
that is why here you see 4 2 1 then for team C it was 5 0 2 that is why you see here 5 0 2 and team D it is 3 2 2 that is why you see here 3 2 2 what about for the second round for so for the second round Team A was 4, 2, 1. So 4, 2, 1, that's why you see here 4, 2, 1. Then Team B was 3, 3, 1. That's why you see here 3, 3, 1. Team C won all. Remember the total is 7. So if you, for example, 3 plus 3 plus 1, that is 7. So if it won all, it will be 7, 0, 0. That's why you see here 7, 0, 0. Then team D it was 1, 4, 2. That's why you see here 1, 4, 2. So that's what they wanted for Roman 1. Now for Roman 2, for both rounds, it means that you have to add the two matrices. So you shall come here and add both matrices. And when I add 3 plus 4 gives me 7. 4 plus 3 gives me 7. 5 plus 3 gives me 12. 3 plus 1 gives me 3. That is for the first row. What about for the second row? So for the second row, 4 plus 2 gives me 6. 2 plus 3 gives me 5. 0 plus 0 gives 0. And 2 plus 4 gives 6. Then the, for the last row, 0 plus 1 gives 1. 1 plus 1 gives 2, 2 plus 0 gives 2, and 2 plus 2 gives 4. So now this is the matrix for both rounds. Then part C, they wanted a matrix for the hours. Remember they said 3 points for a win, 1 point for a draw, and 0 for a loss. So this is one row and three columns. So that is a one by three matrix. Now before we go to the next slide, let's see how much can be awarded for this slide. So B1 for the correct order. Correct order means three by four because some students may could write four here and three this side. So Correct order that is B1, then correct entry that is another B1. Similarly, here, correct order B1 and correct entry another B1. Then here, M1 for addition and A1 for output. Here, B1 for the correct order and correct entries. So that is B Roman 1. What about Roman 2? So Roman 2 says that by matrix multiplication, determine the tournament winner. So we have to use matrix multiplication. So matrix multiplication which means that you remember the order has to be correct. So we shall begin with this and followed by the we shall begin with the matrix for the awards and followed by the matrix for the points because if I interchange it will not be the multiplication cannot come out because number of rows must be equal to the number of columns this will look at this this is one two three one two three columns and here one two three so this is three and this is three so it is correct so columns here and rows here must be the same now because this may this will be a bit bigger and hectic to work with what we are going to do, we are going to split. How do we split? We shall work team by team. So this will first be multiplied by this alone, then this multiplied by this alone, like that. So that's why we mean by splitting. Because if you work with, if we do the whole of it, it will become too big to fit on the paper and also too confusing. So let's start with team A. So team A, what we mean, we extract out all of these and we put, that's what we put here. So row by column, so what does that mean? 3 by 7 gives me 21, 1 by 6 gives me 6, and 0 by 1 gives me 0. When I add all this, I'll come up with 27. Then I'll go to team B. So team B, I'll extract out this. 
So 3 by 7 is 21, 1 by 5 is 5, 0 by 2 is 0. So in the end I'll come up with 26. Then for team C I'll extract out this. So 3 by 12 is 36, 1 by 0 is 0, 0 by 2 is 0. So in the end I'll come up with 36. Then next is team D. So team D, I'll extract out this. I think you realize that now here it is a bit neat and easier to work out. So 3 by 3 is 9, 1 by 6 is 6, and 0 by, zero by 4 is 0. So in the end I'll come up with 15. So those are the, those are the points, total points got by each team. So the winner will be the one with the highest. So this will be the highest therefore team C is the winner therefore I'll come and conclude that the tournament winner is team C so basically that's what they wanted now let's see how much can be awarded so B1 for you to get that 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 but not you must use matrix multiplication then B1 for conclusion So now we shall go to question 15. Question 15 part A says, solve the following simultaneous equations by matrix method. So these are the simultaneous equations which you have to solve using matrix method. Then part B, given matrices A, which is 2, 1, 3, 4, and B, which is 3, 6, negative 2, 1, 8, find part Roman 1, Find matrix C so that C plus 2A is equal to B and part Roman 2. If the image of point XY and the transformation matrix represented by matrix C is P prime which is negative 12, 2, find the values of X and Y. In other words, the values of the object given the matrix and the image. So we shall start with question we shall start with part A. So part A, I think, realize that they are not well arranged because this is y x x y, and this is this one is also this side. So we have to arrange so that we, if we begin with x, all equations begin with x followed by y, followed, and lastly the constants. So that is what we are going to first do. So the first thing to do is to rearrange so that we begin with x followed by y and lastly constants. Now when that is done, we can now form the matrices. So coefficient matrix will be negative 5, 2, 4, negative 3. So I think we see it in negative 5, 2, 4, negative 3. Then the variables will start with x followed by y. So the column matrix will be x followed by y. Constants it is 2 followed by negative 6. So column matrix will be 2 followed by negative 6. So next is to multiply both sides by the adjoint. So how is the adjoint good? Adjoint, you interchange the entries in the major diagonal. So this 3 will come this side and this 5 will come this side. That is for the major diagonal. But for the minor diagonal, we change the signs. What does that mean? It means that now positive 2 will become negative 2 and positive 4 will become negative 4. So this is the adjoint and is multiplied on both sides, but not the order of the multiplication. So the order must be this. If you put this one after this, it will be wrong. Now next is to multiply. So remember I multiply row by column. So first row with first column, it will be negative five, 3 by negative 5 to give me positive 15 plus negative 2 by 4 to give me negative 8, which is that. Then first row, second column, negative 3 by 2 to give me negative 6. Then negative 2 by negative 3 to give me positive 3. Then next it will be second row, first column. So this with this gives me positive 20. This with this gives me negative 20. Then lastly, second row, second column, this with this gives negative 8, this with this gives positive 15. 
Then also for this side, it will be row by column, so row by column, it, this with that gives me negative 6 plus 12, and this with this gives me negative 8 plus 30. So next is to simplify, for example, 15 minus 8 is 7, negative 6 plus 6 is 0, 20 minus 20 is 0, and this is 7. So I think you realize that the entries after simplifying the entries here are the same in the major diagonal. So they have to be the same. If they are not, then it implies that there was a certain mistake in your multiplication. Or is not that. Then for this side, this gives me 6 and this gives me 22. After that, I'll use equality. So this times this equal to this. So 7x equal to 6. Therefore, x is equal to 6 over 7. Then also, this times this is equal to this. Therefore, 7y is equal to 22, implying that y is equal to 22 over 7. So before we go to the next slide, let's see marks for part A. So M1 for rearranging and M1 for forming correct matrices this for multiplying both sides uh, with the correct order and M1 for simplifying then A1 for value of X and A1 for value of Y so that was part A now let's go to part B so part B says given matrices A equal to 2, 1 and 3 is 4 and matrix B is that find matrix C so that C plus 2A is equal to B and also they want you to get the values of the object given this matrix C and the transformation matrix C and the image which is negative 2L of 2. So let's see how that can be done. So we are given that C plus 2A is equal to B. Therefore when I, when I substitute so this was supposed to be an equal sign, so put here an equal sign. When I make C the subject, this one goes this side to become C equal to B minus 2A. Then I substitute, this is the coordinate of B and this is the coordinate of A and there is a 2 here. So next I'll simplify. So this 2 multiply through every entry on the inside this matrix, so to come up with that. And when I subtract, so subtracting this minus this is 2, this minus that is that, this minus this is that, and this minus this is that. So I'll come up with matrix C being equal to, so this is an equal sign, so C is equal to 2, negative 4, 5, negative 5, 0. So that was part Roman 1, now let's go to Roman 2. So for Roman 2, I'll first get the determinant because... In this case, I'm given image and I want the object, so I have to get first get the inverse matrix. So, to get the inverse, I have to first get the determinant. So, determinant of C will be equal to the product of entries in the major diagonal. So, 2 times 0 is 0 minus product of entries in the minor diagonal. So, negative 5 times negative 4 will give me positive 10, positive 20. So, 0 minus 20 is equal to negative 20. So therefore the inverse will be equal to 1 over determinant multiplied by the adjoint. Now the adjoint is good by interchanging the entries in the minor diagonal, in the major diagonal for example. That's why this 0 is here and this 2 is here. But for the minor diagonal we change the sign. So this was negative 4 becomes positive 4, negative 5 becomes positive 5. Then when I simplify, therefore I'll come and say that therefore this object will be equal to the inverse of the transformation matrix multiplied by the image therefore the object was xy inverse is that and object is this so next is to multiply so when i multiply this with this i'll come up with 0 plus 8 this with this i'll come up with negative 6 plus 4 when I simplify further, I'll come up with that. Then that this means that this one will multiply each entry inside this matrix. The two come up with that. So eight over negative one twenty negative twenty will give me negative one over five. 
then negative 56 over negative 20 will give me 14 over 5. Therefore, x is negative 1 over 5 and y is 14 over 5. So that's what they wanted and now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 for subtraction and A1 for output. M1 for inverse, M1 for substitution, this one for simplifying, and this for the values of X and Y. So now we shall go to question 16. Question 16 says the table below shows the max scored in a certain class of 60 students in a mathematics test. So these are the max grouped in two classes and these are the number of students who got the respective marks which are grouped. Then part A Roman 1 says state the class interval then state the model class then part B calculate the mean mark using a working mean of 54 so in this case they are going as a working mean and part C draw a histogram and use it to estimate the model mark. So before anything, we are going to first tabulate our results, our values. So we shall begin with the class. So for the class, these are the classes. So these are the classes which we are going to feed in. So we shall come here and feed in those classes. So next is F. So this F means frequency. Now frequency are these values for the number of students. So shall come and also fill in those frequencies. And at the end we have to add all of them. So we have to add all these values. When I add all of them I'll come up with 60. That's what we put under the row of total. So next is to get the mid mark or class mark. Class mark is good by adding the two limits and divide by two. So 20 plus 29 divided by two, I'll come up with 24.5. This side I'll come up with 34.5, 44.5, 54.5, 64.5, 74.5, and lastly 84.5. So for each row, I have to add and divide by two, add and divide by two, add and divide by two until the end. But they told us to use a working mean of 54. What That means that we have to put a column of deviation. Now, deviation is equal to x minus the working mean, which is 54.5. Therefore, for example, these values, I'll keep on subtracting 54.5 from each. For example, 24.5 minus 54.5 is negative 30. This minus 54.5 gives that. This minus 54.5 gives that. This minus 54.5 gives that and it continues until the end. Now that I've got the value of D and the values of F, I can now get the column of FD. So FD means I'll keep on multiplying each value in F with the corresponding value of D. So for this with this will give me this and this will give me that like that. So I'm multiplying each value in the column of F with the corresponding value of D. And at the end, I have to add all of them. So when I add all these values, I'll come up with 90. So next is the class boundaries. So for the class boundaries, remember I have to look at these values. And the difference between the two, 30 minus 29 is 1. So 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5, meaning... For these upper class boundaries, I'll keep on adding 0 0.5 to the upper class limits. While for the lower class boundaries, I'll keep on subtracting 0 0.5 from the lower class limits. So that's how those values can be generated. So now we have finished the table, we can now answer the questions. So before we answer, let's, before we go to the next slide, let's first see how much for this table can be good. So B1 for the values of X, another B1 for generating values of D, 
m1 for generating values of f d and also the plus the total and b1 for generating values of the class boundaries so now we shall start to answer our questions roman one they said class interval then model class then part b they wanted the main class mark min mark using working mean of that and lastly drawing a histogram so let's first start with part a roman one so the class interval is got by the difference between the class boundaries each cl so for example if i come here So there are two ways of getting class interval, either from class boundaries or from the class. So if I use class boundaries, I'll just get the difference. So 29.5 minus 19.5, that will be my class interval. Or if I use class, I'll have to say 29 minus 20, everything plus 1. So any of the two works. So yeah, I can use that. Or I can say class interval is equal to 29 minus 20, after that plus 1. So 29 minus 20 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. So that means that the class interval is 10 and can be got from any of the two approaches. Then part B, they wanted the model class. Now the model class is the class with the highest frequency. So when I look at this column of frequency, this is the highest. Therefore, the corresponding class is this, 50 to 59, and that will be your model class. Then for part B, they wanted working mean using a working mean of 54 so that when you are given a working mean this will be the formula so a to mean assumed mean or the working mean which is given the question and summation of fd is the total of all the values of fd and summation of f is the total of all the values in the f column so when i simplify i come up with this so 90 over 60 gives me 1.5 and when i add on this working mean i'll come up with 56 as my mean mark so before we go to part C of a histogram, let's see how mass can be awarded for this part. So B1 for class interval, B1 for class model class, B1 for substituting the formula, and A1 for output. So that has been part A and part B. Now let's go to part C. So for each draw histogram, you need a graph paper. So that is a graph paper. Next, you have to remember that a histogram is a graph of frequency against class boundaries so how vertical is so vertical will be frequency and horizontal will be class boundaries so let's first begin with the horizontal and put there the class boundaries so for that you have to label the horizontal axis as class boundaries next we shall go to vertical and put there the values of frequency but the scale has to be uniform and you also have to label okay now from there we have to plot now to draw bars of frequency corresponding to the to each class for example when you go to this what we are going to do is we are going to plot for this the corresponding frequency is 2 then for this the corresponding frequency is 8 for this the corresponding frequency is 10 for this the corresponding frequency is 18 for this it is 9 for this it is 7 and for this it is 6 so we are going to draw bars for all those ones so vertical will have this and horizontal will have this So let's start. For the first class boundary, it was 2, frequency was 2. The next frequency was 8, that is that. The next frequency was 10, which is that. The next frequency was 18, which is that. And the next frequency was 9, which is that. And next frequency was 7, which is that. And last frequency was 6, which is that. So now we are done with drawing a histogram 
and the next is to use it to get the model mark so model mark you have to join this with this and also join this with this so when I do that this is what I'm going to get and after that you have to drop a perpendicular from this point of intersection to meet the horizontal axis so when I do that this is what I'm going to get all of that I have to read off this value and that will be my model mark so when I read it off it will be 54.5 so how was that 54.5 got first of all you have to remember that let's see how it can be got first of all we have to read off this value before this dotted line so which is that then next we have to get the scale for one small square remember from 59 remember our class interval was 10 meaning that and these are 10 small squares from here to here meaning that what 10 divided by 10 is 1 meaning that one small square represents one unit and therefore this is where this one comes from now how how about this five this five comes up from reading this counting the small squares. so from here to here there are five small squares that's why this is five here so when I use a calculator and simplifier, I come up with a value which we read off here. So that is how they can read this value. So basically that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So B1 for a correct axis with correct scale. B1 for bars, all these bars. M1 for attempting to find the model mark. So when I see these lines, that is B1 and A1 for stating the model mark. So now we shall go to question 17. Question 17 says An investor wishes to construct two types of rental houses A and B. Type A requires 300 meters square meter of space, while type B requires 800 square meter of space. He has only 2400 square meter of space available know that word only the cost of constructing a type a house is shillings 150 million while that of, of type b is shillings 400 million there is only shillings 1.05 million available for construction of the houses part a taking x as the number of type A houses and Y as the number of type B houses, write down four inequalities representing the given information. Then part B represent the four inequalities on the same axis. And part C, if the investor's profit is given by 50, 350x plus 560y, Find the number of houses of each type that maximizes the investor's profit. So we shall start with part A which says that taking X and to be the number of type A houses and Y to be the number of type B houses, write down four inequalities to represent the given information. So the first inequality will be 300x plus 800y is less or equal to 2400. Now how does that come about? We shall have to come back here in our statement. And they told us that type A is 300, takes 300 meters squared and type B is, takes 800 meters space. Each one but the total land available, space available is this, meaning that the number of type A houses will be this for each multiplied by the number of houses so that's where 300x comes from then y 300 800y comes from this then less or equal to this because the total space available is only now only means less or equal to it cannot exceed this so that is why we sh we, here we wrote that 300x plus 800y is less or equal to 2400 now 
this equation can be reduced if i divide 3 by 100 i'll come up with 3x plus 8y is less or equal to 24. so that is one equation now let's go to the next equation next question is 150x plus 400y equal is less or equal to 1050 1050 so how did that come about now that one was got from the cost of building the houses because we are told that type a requires 150 so that's where 150 x comes from type b requires 400 that's where 400 y comes from and there is only 1.050 1.05 million so remember this million and this million and this is a million therefore the remainder will have 150 400 and 1050 so that is where this one is coming from then you can also reduce this to come up with 3x plus 8y equal less or equal to 21 then the third equation now the third equation is I can say it is logic because the number of houses can never be negative number of houses built can never be negative therefore the number of type A houses built must be either 0 or more than 0 either none of the houses built of type A or some houses are built that is why you put your x is greater than or equal to zero so this one is got from logic and also the last one is also got from logic because the number of type B houses built can never be negative it is either none or some that is why you put greater than or equal to zero so those are the four equations which they wanted now for part B they wanted to represent these inequalities on the graph on the same axis but before you represent you have to first find out the coordinates to plot because these are lines so that is why this table is very very crucial let's see how it can be filled so first is the column for regions now regions are these very equations the very inequalities which have been formed so this is here this is here this is here and this is here so the next column will be for what we call the borderline now border borderline what it means is the lines we are going to plot now the lines i'm going to plot what I, what i do instead of writing this inequality i remove it and replace it with an equal sign so remove replace with an equal sign remove replace with an equal sign remove replace with an equal sign so that's how they generate the column for border lines the next is to generate the column for coordinates to use now for this one it is easier because it is just x equal to zero meaning it is the y axis this one is y equal to zero meaning it is the x axis but for this one you have to generate at least two coordinates so two coordinates you ask yourself when x is 0 what is y so when x is 0 the whole of this is 0 and you remain with 8y equal to 24 therefore y is equal to 24 over 8 to give me 3 so that is where this coordinate is coming from then now that you ask yourself what what if y is equal to 0 it means that the whole of this is 0 and you remain with 3x equal to 24 therefore to make x the subject it will be 24 over 3 which will give me 8 which is here so this is where the second coordinate is coming from now the same applies for this one so when x is equal to, for example if i say that when why haven't i used x equal to 0 because when x is equal to 0 the whole of this will be 0 and i remain with 8y equal to 21 therefore y will be 21 over 8 which is which has a lot of decimals therefore and the decimals will not be able to be plotted that is why I didn't use that so when I use 1 when x is 1 here it implies that 3 plus this is equal to 21 therefore bring 3 this side you'll come up with 8y being equal to so 21 minus 3 
therefore y will be equal to 2.25 this one is easier to plot because 0 0.25 is a quarter then for the what if y is equal to 0 so when y is equal to 0 it implies that the whole of this is 0 and I remain with 3x equal to 21 therefore x will be equal to 21 over 3 which gives me 7 so I'll get that's where this coordinate is coming from now lastly is testing the regions now testing the regions helps us to know the wanted region and the unwanted region because we uh, so we shed only the unwanted region and leave the wanted region unshaded so these ones are easier because x greater than 0 means that the wanted region are those positive values therefore the one negative values are the unwanted similarly this one y greater than or equal to 0 meaning that the positive values of y are the wanted region and the negative values of y are the unwanted but for this one it is not easy to find out therefore what we do we choose a point now when you choose the origin of 0, 0, it means that you come here and substitute 0 here and put 0 here. So in the end you come up with 0 is less or equal to 20. Then you ask yourself, is it true or false? In this case it is true because 0 is smaller than 20. Therefore, you come here and write true. Now that's why true means that the region where you got this point from is the word wanted region. Therefore, the unwanted region would be the opposite. Similarly, you do the same for this line. So when I use 0, 0, I come up with 0 less or equal to 20. And it is also true, meaning that where you got this point from is the wanted region. And the unwanted region is be the other side. So this table will help us very, very well. to, And we shall see how it can be used to shade, to use, to draw the region. So let's before go, before we draw let's see how much can be awarded for this slide so b1 for equation one b1 for second equation third equation and fourth equation so now we shall go to roman 2 so for you to plot you have to have a graph paper next you have to draw the axis now this side we don't need negative values that's why we put we leave one centimeter below on the horizontal and draw the horizontal axis one centimeter on the vertical and draw the vertical axis then we have to label them label x axis and y axis when that is done we are going to put values for the x axis so let's do that then you also put values for the y axis when that is done next is to plot now to plot we have to use these values for example this one is already there y axis and this is x axis but now for this one we have to plot two points that is 0 3 and 8 0 and after that we shall join then for this one we have to plot two points also 1 2.25 and 7 0 so we shall start with 0 3 1 okay 1 2.25 so 2.25 means a quarter so this is 2.5 this is 2 therefore midway is 2.25 then also 0 7 which is there so these are the two points now next is to draw a straight line through those points so let's do that now that we have to label that this is the equation of now i think we realize that this is a border line it, is, it has equal sign not inequality so always remember that we don't plot regions we plot border lines so next was zero three and Eight zero. So we have to draw a line through those two points. So let's do that. So that's the line, and you also have to label the equation of the line. Note that we are using border lines, not inequalities. So we are done. Next is now to shade. Remember, we said first was x greater than 
or equal to zero. X greater than or equal to zero means that positive values are needed. Therefore, the unwanted region is this side, so shall shade that part. For y greater than zero, positive values are needed. Therefore, the unwanted region is this part, so shall shade that part. Now, for this line, for you to know what to shade, you have to come back here and say. Remember, all of them were true, true, and they use the same point zero zero, meaning that where I got this point from is the wanted region, and the wanted is the opposite part. Therefore, you come here and ask yourself: for this line, the point is this, meaning that this side is the wanted region, and the other side is the unwanted region. Similarly, also for this line, the point was this, meaning that this part is the wanted region, and this is the unwanted region. So let's do that shading. So for this line, we shall shade this the other part and also for this line we are going to shade the other part so let's do that shading also like that so this part enclosed by all these lines is what we call the feasible region and the one we use to get what is required either minimum or maximum profit so if you go back to your equation to your question, we have finished part B. Now we are going to part C. They say that if the investor's profit is given by 5350x plus 3560y, find the number of houses of each type that maximizes the, prof the investor's profit. So that one is got in the from the feasible region. So in this region, we have to look for integers or whole numbers of both x and y. But they want maximum profit. So we shall start with this. So when I start with 0, the highest value integer is 7. So 7, 0 is one of the points. The next I'll go to 1. So if I look at 1, this is the line. There is this one which is an integer. This is an integer. This is an integer. This is an integer. But the highest is this one. What does that mean? It means that now, which instead of these ones will be ignored, but and we shall take this one, which is the highest integer. So that will be for one. Then when you go to two, there is this. Now two is not there, so the only point is that. So that's what we are going to take. So you'll take one two. Then when you go to three, three is already outside the in within the unwanted region so we have three points there is two one four one and seven zero so those are the points we are going to use to get the maximum profit so before we go to the next slide let's see how much can be awarded for this part so m1 for the correct line of this with the correct shading and this one for correct line this with correct shading this one for the unwanted region for x greater than that and this one also for shading the region for this then a1 for the correct region so when this region is correct that is a one now remember for part b we are going to use these three points now which we have got because they wanted maximum profit So we shall come and say that output is this. So this is the investor's profit. It was given by 350x plus 560y. Therefore, we shall come and draw our table. Now in the table, we are going to first put there the points which we have got in the feasible region. And that was 7, 0, 4, 1, and 1, 2. Then next, we have to get the value for 350x. So 350x means that these, these are the values of x will be multiplied by 350. So 7 times 350 will give me 2450. 4 by 350 will give me 1400. 0. 1 by 350 will give me 350. The next is to generate the values of 350, 360y, 560y. So 0 by 560 will give me 0. 1 by 560 will give me 560. 
2 by 5 6 a will give me 1 1 2 0 now next we have to add those two values so this plus this will give me that then this plus this will give me that and this plus this will give me that now maximum you have to look for the highest value here so the highest value is this therefore we shall come and conclude that to maximize the investors profit type a houses seven type a houses and none of type b houses will be constructed so that's what they wanted now let's see how marks can be awarded so b1 for listing all these points in the feasible region m1 for the output and a1 for conclusion so concluding this and this that is a one so that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i believe you have benefited a lot now be reminded that the next video will be on mock paper 2 of math of all level math so if you have not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video for paper 2 of math mock has been uploaded as otherwise if you know of any student who's not yet on this platform also share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that you can all benefit as a family remember if you want to do attempt to sit for an examination without attempting questions in the past papers that would be academic suicide so i don't want you to commit, commit academic suicide and also i request that you also don't wish others to commit that academic suicide therefore share the link of this video so that we can all benefit and we all excel as a team